At some point in our lives, we come across an individual, usually in our working life, who we come to call the upstart, someone who knows more than we do about what we've been practicing and doing for many years. In the poem Winner and Waster, written in the third quarter of the 14th century, we are uniquely introduced to an upstart community amongst the poets at court. The poet of Winner and Waster appears deeply critical of a community of individuals who appear to be holding sway and potentially are denying him and his exponents uh, a living which they feel entitled to on account of their skill and craft. The alliterative poets, in his view, have a particular skill in being able to guide a monarch or a lord by means of an allegorical form of poetry. They're not unduly critical necessarily of what they're describing, but they invite the listener or the reader to reflect on a course of action uh, by listening to the words that the poet is saying. Indeed, this is used to great effect in poems such as the alliterative Mort Arthur, King Arthur's Death, and to a lesser and more nuanced degree in poems such as The Parliament of the Three Ages or, of course, um, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. So let's join the poet now of Winner and Waster and hear his criticism of these upstart poets that are coming into his life. It's quite interesting and he sets us initially he starts as does the Gawain poet by placing his poem in the great pantheon of British history and he takes us all the way back to the founding of Britain allegedly by Brutus but then slowly but surely he turns on these upstarts within the first 20 or 30 lines. Sithen that Britain was begged, and broitus it octa through the taking of Troy with Trezon within, there hath Selkulths been seen in Sira King as timers, but never so many as now by the Ninadale. For now all as wit and wilers that we with dealing, wise worders and slee, and each on reeth other. Dare never no western we, while this world alasteth, send his son southward, to see nor to hear, that he ne shall hold in behind, when he hoar elders. For this said was a sour of Solomon the wiser, it hayeth hard upon hond, hope I know nother. When wars waxen shall wield, and wall has been down, and hair as upon hearth a stone shall hercle in her form, and eke boys of blood, with boast and with pride, shall wed ladies in London and let hen at will, then dreadful Doma's day it draweth nigh after. But who so sadly will see, and the sooth tell, say it newly will nigh, or is nigh here? Why, Loma, were lauders in London that loved in their heart as to hear makers of mirth that matters couth a fiender, and now is no friendship in fear, but faintness of heart. We a word as within, that rocked her were never, ne read in no romance that ever Renka heard. But now a childer upon chair, without and chin weeds, that never rocked her through wit these words together, for he can jangle also jay, and japers tell, he shall be leaned and lovered and let of a wheel, well more than the man that made it himself. But never the latter, at the last, when lead is been canon, worker witness will bear, who worker can best. What a fantastic introduction. He's so angry, isn't he, about uh, these upstart poets, these uh, children with 
led by cheer uh, with no hair on their chin they're just boys they're people of no substance and his lesson for us today i mean it's amazing 600 years have passed since he wrote those words and yet we know such people today such upstarts and his lesson is this don't let people who appear to talk a good game take a position of leadership or responsibility the devil always is in the detail substance quality is what counts deeds not words what an astonishing introduction he's made there yet it's important to set this in context and here's the rub with this poem it was written sometime after 1350 it was written after the initial impact of the black death possibly written after the second wave of the Black Death in the 1360s. This is a society that had suffered a catastrophic shock to its entire infrastructure. This was a time when the old feudal structures of society were crumbling when the forces of commerce were growing and when increasingly the peasant classes, if we might call them that loosely, had greater control of their lives. So this is a poem which was written at a time of deep social change and we can imagine that society at the highest level probably didn't know which way to turn and some of these older alliterative poets whose craft was developed over decades, maybe even centuries, who knows, now found themselves out of favor perhaps to people who could uh, turn the eye, bend the ear of a lord or a king. It's quite similar to today's society. Here we are in the face of another massive uh, and catastrophic shock but it always holds true turn to quality for the answer the answer is not in spin and manipulation and the alliterative poets well you know what they knew that then and in truth we know it now stay safe out there everybody and thank you very much for listening